Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today it's time for us to review Star Wars Episode One Racer, or Star Wars Racer, as for some reason the icon seems to say. This review was originally written by the wonderful Stuart Jip and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> time ago in uh, this galaxy, a game called Star Wars Episode One Racer was a smash hit, leading to dozens of enthusiastic magazine reviews with the byline, now this is pod racing. Unfortunately, the intervening years and general sense of wanting quality have been unkind to the Star Wars prequels, but does that hindsight extend to this thoroughly literally named racing tie-in? Thankfully, not quite. Back in the N64 days, Episode One Racer was a clean, simple experience, largely elevated by its sense of tremendous speed. And that hasn't changed in the slightest. The major difference in Star Wars Episode One Racer on Switch is that the game now runs at an unbroken 60 frames a second and at a considerably higher resolution, which... My god, thank you. Naturally, this means that the game's originally smooth gameplay is now even smoother. This is pretty much the definitive way to race pods with pin-sharp graphics compared to what you remember, although the textures themselves are still just as blurry as they were years ago. And so the song remains the same figuratively and thankfully, literally with the outstanding John Williams soundtrack pounding through every single course. And those races are gloriously arcadey with wide courses full of obstacles, shortcuts and elevated alternate routes. It's speedy, it's exhilarating, it's very Star Wars. There's also a little bit of a hint of F-Zero about the proceedings, though nowhere near the level of challenge you'd get from Captain Falcon and the crew. While we're on the topic of it being evocative of classic Nintendo franchises, there's even a tiny little bit of Star Fox in the way that you can rotate your craft in order to fit through narrow gaps. I mean, it's nothing major, but it's just kind of nice. There are two flavors of control, a modernized scheme that utilizes the ZR button to accelerate, and an old school one that'll be much like you remember from back on the N64, but with the analog stick in a slightly more sensible place. Unfortunately, neither is entirely ideal. To go at full speed, you need to tilt the left stick forwards until a bar on the right of the HUD is filled, and then hit the A button. This is awkward, but it's completely necessary if you want to win anything except the first few races. Boosting for too long, though, will overheat and damage your pod racer, so you'll need to hit the R button to repair it when necessary. And sadly, the controls are only available in these two configurations and aren't remappable. At least within the game, you could remap them on the Switch, but that, that's maybe going a bit far. Between tournament races, you can spend your winnings in cheerful stereotype Watto's little store to buy parts for your racer, from thrust coils to air brakes, and everything in between, which allows you to unsurprisingly improve the stats of your pod racer. You can also buy damaged parts from the junkyard at a discount, using your pit droids mid-race to repair them back up to working order. These new gizmos and gadgets are also part exchanged when you buy new ones, so there's an economy to fixing up broken components for resale, adding depth to the game, although it never really goes crazy depth, but... It's a Star Wars racer from the N64. Give it a give it a bit of slack. It's also fairly easy to exploit and quickly ramp up your abilities simply by exiting and re-entering the menu with different characters until you find the part you need for a price you can afford, but don't tell Watto that. One somewhat troublesome system is the way that prizes actually work. You can wager the outcome of each race based on your performance, for example winner takes all, or a prize pool that goes to the first four racers. However, you can't win money a second time by replaying races. Races. so if you find yourself lagging behind, it's best to restart than to place in a low winning position. This is a little bit counterintuitive and we found it dragged us out of the game just a touch, you know, just enough to be irritating. However, there are plenty of unlockable races to choose from after the initial eight, although the only one we recognized was the cheating Sebulba and the one that I play as exclusively because he's the fastest, isn't it? The characters are generally extremely unbalanced, which means an online mode would require extensive effort 
to make it actually work properly. And as it happens, there is no online multiplayer, so that's not an issue. Only local players present, and to be brutally honest, it's not the most enticing prospect when you got things like Mario Kart and Crash Team Racing literally right there. Besides the single player tournament mode, which can be beaten in just a few hours, we found there's not a whole lot of replay value here. While the base game is good and the tracks are varied with plenty of shortcut potential, without an online mode there's very little incentive to get really good. The local play works fine, but it doesn't hold a great amount of appeal when compared to more contemporary titles, and the single races and time trials are naturally going to be a bit of an acquired taste. It's not particularly difficult to unlock all the characters either, especially if you use one of the cheat codes like I did. You're going to unlock them naturally as you place first in races, and that's not that hard to do. The central loop of race, win, upgrade race is certainly compelling whilst it lasts, and if you have fond memories of Star Wars Episode 1 Racer from your childhood, this is the best way to relive them, as it's just so convenient. Just don't expect any huge overhauls from the original game. Star Wars Episode 1 Racer sets itself apart from the likes of Wipeout with its earnest take on the popular license, and it's still fun to relive the only reason you'd watch Episode 1 again, but it's a long way from being one of the best races on Switch. You've made it to the end and you know what that means. Yes, it's time for Alex's personal thoughts. Hurrah! Overall, I've got to largely agree with Stuart. It's one of those games that for the time it was it was it was great, you know, but things things have changed so much and there's not really there's not really a great deal here to keep bringing you back. I played it and I really enjoyed it and I liked actually being able to be good at the game now because I was a child. In fact, this was the first N64 game I ever owned. And even then I didn't really own it because my brother won it in a competition. Along with an N64, fun story. Although I still attest that he wouldn't have won it if he hadn't have gone with my advice and said yes, that is a 30th party ring. It's a fun time, but I can't help but feel that a lot of my enjoyment with the game is just pure nostalgia and for me you know for many people that's going to be absolutely fine but we've got to try and review it from a more objective point of view and yeah i mean it's not the most expensive game in the world it's like 12 pound 50 or something like that but even so ah, it just it's it's a very limited game there's not a great deal of scope the one saving grace for me that means that i spent more time on this game than i think i would have done otherwise is the cheat codes i am a huge sucker for cheat codes and they're here, and they're proper, and they're really weird and really well hidden. They're basically exactly the same as they were on the N64, minus the dual control method, because why would you do that? And I had an amazing amount of fun just zipping around, you know, breaking the tracks as much, as much as possible, being invincible, unlocking all the characters instantly. It's, I, I think it's great fun, you know, debug menu, changing all your, your pod racers stats on the fly. It's stupid and it's fun and I love it. But as a game on the whole, it's not delivering as much as perhaps it could have done. But it is what it is. If you don't mind arcadey fun with limited scope, it's a good time. <laughs>